What's up guys? Black is Night here and I'm coming at you guys with my competitive Dark Magician deck for the January 2020 format. So to preface this deck, this video, I'm gonna show I'm gonna tell you guys that this is still Dark Magician, so it's not not the most competitive deck. Um, but it's still a lot of fun. And uh, there's still a lot of like spicy things you can do and catch people off guard um, if they're not, you know, they're sleeping on the deck. So I'm gonna hop right into it. So to start off with the monsters we play, Triple Dark Magician. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory here. You need to play three. Uh, not really, not really going to elaborate too much on that. Uh, next we play in Triple Magician Souls. This card is insane for the deck. Uh, gives it a lot, a lot more needed uh, search power for Dark Magician and draw power. So like two things the deck really needed. Like could not really deliver with this card. Unfortunately, it's uh, also played in the spiral, so it's a little more pricey than uh, you know than people we would like. But I do have a list that doesn't play this card at all, uh, and let me let me know in the comment section if you guys want to see that. Um, I'm playing triple rod. So this card is you know you guys know what this card does normal summon. It's the Stratos of the deck representing your spells and traps. Really good. Uh, we play the one spell book, Blue Boy. We could play the spell book engine for our draw power. And then we round off our monster count with Double Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. That's it for the monsters. 12 monsters, I believe. Uh, not too much really to say about it. It's pretty good. Uh, on to the spells. We play Triple Dark Magical Circle. Uh, this card is our main interruption of the deck, um, and it's also a sort of polyduality effect. You can just look at the top three and uh, you know, grab a card, and it, whatever Dark Magician is summoned, you can banish a opponent's card. So this card is um, mandatory at three. Uh, one of the cool things about playing three is this, it's actually good now because uh, Magician Souls, if you hit one off the top, you can send the extra copies to, to the grave and draw cards off of it. So it's not completely dead to to play three. Um, I'm playing Triple Soul Servant. This card is also amazing. Um, originally I wasn't so sure, but this uh, in, actual, in actual play, this card is nuts. Uh, being able to stack your deck with anything you need at any given point in time is amazing, and then be able to draw it off the top of your deck. Um, it's cute. You can play Dark Magician Girl and stuff. You can draw two cards, or if you play any of the Palladium cards, you can draw more. But uh, there are cards that are more bricky than, than, than helpful. Um, so, but this card is still good. And Upstar Goblin is, is still a good card. Uh, so, this card is insane. Uh, being able to look at the top three, you can also do some cool things. Like, you can bring cards from the grave, like, so you don't have to use your extra. Like, if you had Eternal Soul, get, they got destroyed. You don't have to, like, dig through your deck to find another one. You can actually search for another one and still have two in your deck, essentially. You can also do some cool things with this card to, like, dodge, like, Call by the Grave if your deck magician is in the grave or something, which is kind of cool. But, uh, yeah, three of this card is really good. Uh, we play the one Dark Magical, uh, Secrets of Dark Magic, Fusion Spell. I would actually consider playing two of this card because this is a power card. Uh, being a quick play Fusion Spell means you can do so much extra damage uh, in the battle phase. And, like, opening this card with, like, Dark Magician plus a monster, you can make your Fusion and get your Dark Magician to the grave really easily. So these can uh, be active uh, turn one. Uh, next we play one Illusion Magic, because we're not playing our Apprentice and we need to still need to see Dark Magician, so this will be the way to do it uh, if you only open the rod. Uh, we'll play the one Spellbook of Secrets and two Spellbook of Knowledge for our Spellbook engine. Um, originally I was playing one Blue Boy and one one, so like you only want to really see it if you um, get two Spellcasters in the field and uh, Blue Boy would... Uh, and then the uh, Crowley link would be able to hit, uh, get you one of these three. But in time, uh, in practice, it didn't work out as well. Most of the time, I would hit this or draw into one of them, and, and it would be dead. So just playing the second copy uh, means I can still like if I draw uh, this, I can search this and have my normal summon be Rod, and still have a live uh, knowledge in, in deck if I draw Blue Boy. So it's been working out. And next we play Triple Pot of Desires, which sounds, you know, people think it's crazy, but this card is actually nuts in the deck. 
Uh, you play three of every single card that matters, so. Um, and that's why I was considering buffing the fusion after two as well. Um, this card is just a plus one, just really helps you get your, um, like get your plays rolling. Like, if you get your rod stopped and you still need to dig through the deck, this card will get you there. Like, I was playing, actually, I was actually playing a, a couple test hands before, and he used two of these in a duel and, like, still didn't banish a single Eternal Soul or Dark Magician. I think I may have banished one Dark Magician, but not a single Eternal Soul or anything else that was important, so. This card is definitely needs to be played, in my opinion. Uh, then we play the one of Star Goblin. The deck is more than 40 cards, but this card doesn't serve a function of making the deck a 39 card deck. It serves the function of being able to stack your deck and draw whatever you need. So that's why we play that. Uh, play next, we play Triple Call by the Grave to run out our spells. And yeah, not, nothing really much to say about Call by the Grave, it just helps your plays go through. and. Uh, going first is like a DD Crow, which is really good this format, so that's that. And then onto the traps. We're playing Triple Eternal Soul. This card is needed. Um, uh, I think three is the right number. I don't, I don't think I want to play anything less than that. I've seen people play two, but they don't play Desires. Um, and I think three, the three is the right number regardless because. You know, the more cards you draw in your open hand for Dark Magician, the less you have to like rely on Rod and Souls and drawing into them for luck. So like, you wanted to see them so you can just search, search less and have everything you need. Like, ideally, you would always want to see like this uh, Eternal Soul and Dark Magician in hand. That's like the goal, or in Grave, and you just want to like maximize yourself when you're able to do that. So if you just like hard draw these, you can like, you can like just set some other stuff and not have to worry as much about getting to your main pieces. So, Triple Eternal Soul is definitely the way to go. Uh, play the one. Magician Navigation, because it's still a way to summon Dark Magician. Uh, it doesn't come up as much uh, nowadays, and most of the time you just want to send it to Grave off of um, Magician Soul's effect to draw a card, but it still comes up. Um, like, it's, it's really sad, because this was actually my favorite card in the deck, and now it's just not as good, so. Oh well, what can you, what can you do? Uh, next we play Double Infinite Impermanence, because uh, I feel like this card is just really good, so it is what it is. Uh, next we play Double Crackdown, because Crackdown is pretty much bananas. You can use it to get your links off, take your opponent's monsters so they can't kill you, and, you know, do all that kind of fun stuff. And then one Skill Drain, because Skill Drain is Skill Drain. Uh, then we play Double uh, double Strike and Double Judgment. This is probably the most contingency. Like, the thing I'll change the most about the deck is, like, maybe bump Strike up to three and, like, move this to the side. But right now we're just playing two and two because uh, I just wanted to play that ratio. So, but that's it for the main deck. Uh, I, think, I think it's, like, 43 cards. But every card in here is, like, really good, so... And next is the extra deck. We play the triple, or triple, sorry, double, dark, um, the dark magicians. We don't have the dark magician girl, but we still play this card because this card is uh, nuts. You can like draw and stuff from this card's effect. Um, like this card is better if you play dark magician girl because you can, you know, if it dies, you can just summon two monsters. And if you have a circle, you can trigger it. Um, and like it, it live ends magician combination, which you could play as well. I was playing it a little bit. I ended up cutting the Magician Girl and the combination for two crackdowns, but you could play it if you want it. Um, it's not that terrible. So I also played a little when I played Dark Magician Girl. I also played like Apprentice Illusion Magician and stuff, but uh, those are like some of the options I would play if I wanted to play that stuff. So like you can have more of your quote unquote bad monsters and play a little to banish them and stuff if they're too if they're bricky. So uh, that's that. Uh, next we play the one, um, Dark Magician the Dragonite. We don't play that to Mayas, but you can still make this card, um, and I still like it because it offers protection to your back row, uh, whereas this doesn't. Uh, this is definitely easier to make, and you'll do, you'll summon this, like, 1,000 times out of 10 over this card, but there's still, like, a lot of cool situations where this card is applicable. Um, one of the cool things about Dark Magicians, though, is, like, it gives you more draw power, and like you can draw during your opponent's turn if you happen to draw one of your mini, mini spell the traps, uh, that could potentially be used and disrupt your opponent more. So that's it for the fusions. Uh, for the Xyz, we're playing the one Ebon Illusion Magician, which almost never comes up. 
the one big guy which comes up the most and one flare metal which comes up uh, even less than Ebon Illusion. But we also play one Titanic Moth. I will play this card. Um, you can attack directly and do some burn damage. Uh, but mainly you play this card because um, one of my side deck options was Mystic Mine. And uh, under Mystic Mine you can just make this and attack her direct directly a bunch of times. Basically like a, um, sort of like a high attack type deal. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the Exceeds. Basically, the, the biggest one you play is big guy here because taking monsters and linking them off is, is, is insane. So, for the Lynx, which are probably the most summoned monsters in the deck, honestly, uh, we've got the Imduk, the War Talus Dragon. You summon this, you can summon this, and uh, like if you have a ton of soul and stuff, you can, that's what you use to make Dark Magician and Dragonite uh, during your opponent's turn. He also has a battle effect. If he battles something, he points to, he kills it. Which is kind of neat, but mostly for the dragon effect and linking off Dark Magician, so you can like keep recycling it. Uh, we also put the One Link Spider um, for the same deal. The extra deck space is pretty, pretty, um, pretty uh, open, so you can play. You can afford to play both. Um, if I play Super Poly, that's what I was playing at first, but I don't think Super Poly is as good right now. It's pretty good, but like you have to dedicate a lot of extra deck space to it and there's still some things you have to play to like make the deck function so I'm not playing Super Poly at the moment but if I re revisit this um, in a post shit all format maybe it'll be good maybe I'll play it um, for the, we'll play the Crowley Oppo, uh, uh Masquerina and Nightmare Phoenix for Link 2's these two are summon definitely the most it's the most summon card in my deck um, like just when you think you like this card is like insane because like just when you think you have nothing else to do like you summon them you summon a souls that got to ash you summon not, not a soul you summon a um um like a, a rod that got ash or even a souls that got ashed for the draw effect you kind of like kind of like stuck but this card gives you more plays you can uh, potentially hit a spell book um of secrets or knowledge and dig two more cards into your deck and basically keep rolling you guys know what this card does and this card should be pretty obvious too but that's it for those. And then we play the Link 3s. We play the one Unicorn, one VLS Link. Uh, this card it comes in handy a lot because when like you play Big Eye, you can take stuff. So like you just two Dark Magicians into Big Eye, take a Pause Monster, and then turn Soul back Dark Magician. You can just go and right to this dude. You play Crackdown as well, which you can use. Um, and then you can just straight up just summon a bunch of like a bunch of spellcasters and just make it that way too. Like. Uh, card's pretty good. And then, of course, the Unicorn for the IP Masquerina. And then a Boiled Dragon. Because, um, yeah, Boiled. So, easy, easier to make now with, like, since I'm playing Crackdown and Big Eye and stuff. But it was pretty hard before. But that's it for the extra deck and the main deck. Let me guys, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, like the video. If you enjoy the deck profile and you want to see more, uh, you can subscribe. Uh, the name, the, the YouTube name right now is is Team Judgment, but it's subject to change to Black as Night um, in, the, in the upcoming uh, days. So that's that. Until then, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.